welcome to Bloomer Academy. Thank you so much for joining us today where we are talking about how you can create your development plan. As I mentioned today, we're talking about how you can create or we're, we're going to walk through creating your development plan. Our instructor for today is our training team manager and the second half of Die Squared, Die Cox, who brings an extensive nonprofit and database experience to Bloomerang and to the team. So we're very excited to have her with us today. Welcome, Di. Hi, thanks, Diana. And hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk today. Uh, today's class, we're going to be talking about creating your development plan. Uh, and this is a plan that can be built specifically for use in your organization. So take what we do and customize it today to you guys. Um, there is a template, it's available uh, on the Bloomerang website. Um, I'm using that template, we'll review it today. And then there's a link to the template in the slideshow. And again, you guys can go to the Bloomerang website uh, and get that now. Uh, so you can download it, you can use it, and again, modify it. Uh, there are some examples in that template of different things uh, that development offices uh, can or do use. And so you'll see that as well when we get to that portion. Okay, so today uh, we're gonna cover these topics. So we are going to talk about why you should have a development plan, uh, the prep work that should go into your development plan, uh, questions that you should be asking and then answering. Uh, internally, we'll talk about uh, you know, who, those, who those questions should be asked to, uh, who should know that information. Uh, we will then actively create our development plan. Um, we will talk about how you can incorporate that plan into your Bloomerang database. Um, we will talk a little bit about um, some COVID considerations, uh, and then again, we'll have that resources slide. So jumping in, <clears throat> why should you have a development plan? Uh, it is really important um, to, to ensure that everybody at the organization knows what's happening and why and how it's being done. Um, so we codify the plan uh, to effectively communicate what your team is working on throughout the year, uh, what the other teams are working on throughout the year, and then it's standardized internally for your board, um, for anybody else at your organization, for your development team to understand. Uh, and this is kind of the way that you can, you know, make sure that you're not asking constantly what people are doing or understand a calendar that you're looking at when you're trying to schedule meetings. Uh, and, you know, if you need to make adjustments to anything that's happening, you'll know how that impacts everything else down the line. Uh, so there are four key parts to a development plan, um, your governance tasks, communication tasks, development tasks, and grant tasks. Um, so we'll talk about each of those separately. And then again, um, we'll talk about all of those parts together and what that looks like. Uh, there are definitely organizations, by the way, where their communication tasks and their development tasks are considered the same tasks. So again, make it your own. Feel free to adjust uh, your, your calendar and your plan to match how your organization is set up and how you're running everything. All right, so before we actually make our plan, uh, there's some prep work that we recommend doing. Um, so uh, in your CRM or your Excel spreadsheet or whatever method you're using right now uh, for, for collecting all of your data, um, there are a couple of reports that you should run or again, some, some things you should sort. Um, first of all, you're going to need to know your cyber. So Cybunt stands for some year, but unfortunately not this year. It's people who've given a gift in the past, but they haven't given so far this year. Uh, for those of you who are on a calendar year, that list is uh, going to be pretty long right now since it's the beginning of uh, the new calendar year. For those of you who are on a fiscal year, it'll adjust based on the start of your fiscal year date. Um, so you can always adjust your Cybunt report uh, to push back so that you can see who didn't give in calendar year of 2021, but who gave previous to that. So adjust that for, uh, for your use based on your dates. Uh, you're also going to want a list of uh, uh, what was raised by all of your appeals last year. Uh, and you're gonna want to know what was raised with uh, your pledges. So 
you know, if I pledged $1,000, but I only have paid 500 on that, you're going to need to know both portions of that. You want to know what's still due on it. You're going to want to know what actually came in for it. Um, same with recurring gifts. Uh, you're going to want to know who has an active recurring gift. Um, you know, you're going to want to know who uh, is actively paying on that uh, and prospecting out how much you're anticipating getting in this year, assuming all of those stay live, uh, and how much you raised last year. Uh, and then um, by each event last year, you're going to want to break down how much came in for that. Uh, you're also going to want to see uh, the costs associated. Um, so with last year's appeals, how much did it cost to actually send out the mailing? Um, some organizations count that as the, the time for the writer. Um, if you're outsourcing your writer, that would definitely count. But if someone's in-house doing your writing, um, that's kind of up to you if you count their time in your budget for that. Um, some people say that's just standard what their job is and it would be done anyway. So they just count, you know, paper, stamps, uh, a mailhouse if you're using it. Uh, and then your grant management schedule if you're doing grants. Uh, Again, the cost of each of last year's events, uh, overall fundraising goal for your upcoming year or fiscal year periods. Uh, and then I would really recommend uh, getting a copy of your organization's bylaws. Uh, that one uh, can come in when you're talking about annual meetings. Uh, and it is uh, really important to understand what the expectations are for your nonprofit as laid out in the bylaws. Um, so I know this kind of feels like a lot of information to pull before you sit down to create your development plan, um, but the information that you can glean by these different sources uh, is a really great way to facilitate conversation with your uh, team members on what you've done, what you haven't done, how you should do things, um, and how to properly use your time and your financial resources. So, at the point in time when you've gathered all of this information, uh, there are some questions that need to be answered. Um, so we start with these seven. Uh, again, this is just kind of a way to structure your calendar or again, your upcoming period because it may not be on a calendar year. Um, so going down the list here, uh, you need to know what your fiscal year is. Um, you need to know when board elections are and when they start their new terms. Uh, you do need to know if you have an annual meeting uh, prior to the start of your board year. Uh, so this is where the bylaws come in. It's really important to know uh, what your bylaws say about who has voting rights in your organization. Uh, if it's a membership event, uh, and an example of that would be, you know, anyone who donates more than $1,000, for example, um, may have a say in who joins your board with board elections. Um, so you're going to need to get those invitations out and make sure that people know that they have a right to, to vote. Uh, it might also not be so much a voting situation, but an appointment situation. So you should be aware of that and who's making those appointments. Uh, and if it's just a standard uh, past board members and you know a couple of key people at the organization are the ones who are appointing or voting for a board, Again, you need to know that because you need to make sure that those people are present and have uh, enough time to get to that meeting and have their, their right to vote taken seriously by the organization. Uh, so question four that needs to be answered. Um, do you personally uh, or does a member from uh, your staff, so a development director, an executive director, somebody else, uh, meet with the incoming board president uh, to plan your development committee assignments? Uh, or are you just given the development committee assignments? Uh, what are the expectations of your board and how do you interact with them? Uh, is your uh, development committee, for example, supposed to meet with development staff to get an understanding of what you've done, how you do it, uh, and where they can help? Uh, is there a financial obligation for the board? So understanding those expectations and, and when they're going to fall into play and who needs to do what is a really important factor. <clears throat> when are your board meetings for the year? And what materials is your staff expected to provide for these meetings? Uh, and lastly, when is your budget approved? Uh, budgetary meetings, again, can take a couple months sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're really quick. So you kind of need to understand that process and when your budget is fully approved. 
uh, you're going to need that date as well, uh, because leading up to that date, there's going to be some prep work that needs to be done. And whoever is expected to do the prep work is going to need that time in your plan uh, to make sure that they can do that along with the rest of their job duties. All right, so from here, uh, again, we've got the, the link where you can go and get the template. Uh, I'm going to pull up uh, my template here, the blank one, and we're going to start uh, filling it out a little bit so that you guys get an idea of what this looks like. Um, so here's the template. You can see that we have, uh, you know, it broken down here uh, by month, and I just have to start each Monday in there. Uh, this goes out, you can see, to next June. So if you are in a fiscal year, you can start it June to June, uh, you know, March to March, whatever your fiscal year looks like. Start there and then go down. Uh, you can always continue and add more, by the way, if you have a uh, a date range that doesn't fit this one. So start from wherever you are starting from. You can see here that I've broken it out by governance tasks, communication tasks, development tasks, and grant tasks. And again, we have this information here. So we have our sample governance tasks, our communication tasks, um, development tasks, and grant tasks. Uh, if you guys have a grant team, this is a really great exercise for your grant team. If they don't have a master calendar, um, most of them should have a master calendar. So grabbing this information should be pretty easy for them. Um, but there might be some things in here you're not doing and you'll never do. Uh, for example, if you're not a United Way organization, this will not apply to you. Um, so pick and choose what's going to work, add in anything else that's not in here. Uh, if you have four events a year, you're going to have a lot more going on with invitations, a lot more going on with dates and lead ups. Um, this is just a way to start to organize and understand what's going on with your organization. Uh, and then we have those uh, questions that we had to have answered. So let me pull this up. So for my uh, organization here that I have, let me find that document and I will pull it up and share it. There we go. So uh, my organization is called the Galaxy Cleanup Project. Uh, you can see that last year we did four appeals and our spring appeal did not go well. So when we did our, our cost analysis of how much we brought in versus what the cost is, um, our spring appeal really just wasn't doing what we were expecting it to do. It was not bringing enough enough money to actually be worthwhile. Uh, so I have a note in here that we are considering moving that one to email only to lower the cost. Um, so this is another really good exercise. You can figure out what worked and what didn't work and get creative uh, to bring it in and make sure that uh, what you're doing makes sense and is working. Uh, you can go ahead. Hi, Di. Um, we're seeing your notes for the class. You're not seeing the Galaxy Cleanup Project? No. Okay. Give me a second. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, so uh, moving on from here, uh, we see that a pledge drive at an event went well. Uh, our recurring gifts program is going strong. So we had good numbers there. Uh, our annual event did well, um, but a few of our smaller events were not well attended. Uh, and so our team's going to discuss alternatives to that once we've built out our calendar and see where we can fit different things in. Uh, we have our overall fundraising goal listed here. <clears throat> we see uh, that our bylaws have been obtained, our team has read them, um, we understand what's going on with them, so we're going to adjust from there when we're setting out our meetings. Uh, and our grants team already has their, their entire calendar for us for the year, so that's going to be really easy for us to slot in. Um, so that's kind of that note section, and then the questions. So our fiscal year is on the calendar year. So we're starting in January. Uh, our board members start their new term in November. 
Uh, we do have an annual meeting. Um, our bylaws do not have voting requirements based on membership, so we don't have to worry about pulling lists for any of that. Uh, our development director meets with the incoming board and talks about assignments, um, but our staff does not attend that meeting. Uh, and then we do have our expectations down here for our board members. Um, so you can see that there's a financial obligation to solicit funds. Uh, they have to attend two volunteer events per year, uh, and they have to meet with the staff for their committee assignments to ensure that they understand um, how our organization works, how everything fits together, uh, and then they can help to make decisions based on that working knowledge of the department. Uh, our board meetings are the second week of every month and budget approval for the next year happens in October. Uh, a couple of other things here, um, our organization feels strongly in continuing professional education um, or professional development, depending on what you want to call that. Um, so that's something that's going to go on there. Uh, we also uh, add our admin tasks into our calendar. So annual receipts, our tax documents to the staff, all of that. Uh, and then we do a database audit. So we're gonna make sure that we add it in our database audit and make sure that we have time uh, to review that and uh, time, time to adjust based on what we need to do with it. So that answers our questions. That gives us all of that prep work. We have an idea of what we did last year. We've created our budget and now we're ready to sit down and actually start working through everything. So let's go back to that sheet. All right, can you guys see my blank development plan template? Yes, we can. Okay, um, so there's kind of two ways that you can look at this. Uh, some organizations find it more helpful to go one column at a time and say, this is everything that needs to happen for governance. So, you know, board emails or uh, board meetings are the second week of every month. So we got that from my previous sheet. So you can come in here on the second week of every month and say, okay, we have a board meeting. So board meeting, board meeting, board meeting and go down the row. Uh, you can also look at things from a month to month standpoint. Um, so I know that my staff attend my board meetings. Uh, I also know I need to do my year end closeout. That's something my development team is going to do. We have our annual tax receipts we send out. Uh, and, you know, we have tax documents happening. We have a newsletter that goes out in January reviewing everything. Uh, so we can take this and drop everything in by month here and say, this is what needs to happen. Uh, you know, we have those tax documents and those need to go out the week of the 18th. Uh, we've written our newsletter. We wanna get that sent before the end of January. So you can go through this way and say, who needs to attend what this month? What do you have going on? And break the whole thing out by month. Uh, I think kind of a mix of that is going to be helpful uh, because knowing that we have an event in July is great, but then from there you have to back that up and say, who needs to do what for that event in July? Who's writing this? Who's sending the invitations to the printer? Who's doing social media for that? What else is going on? Um, so again, you can take these sample uh, helpful communication tasks over here, these helpful uh, suggestions for grant tasks, and you can build it out. Um, your grant tasks are going to be pretty, uh, pretty solidly already decided based on the grants that you have and what those grant terms are. Um, so it might be really easy for you to go in and say, okay, when are we doing things? What's happening with this? When do we need to get things out? Um, so we can say here, okay, we've got some uh, grant stuff and some annual reports that were coming in here. Um, we need to get all of this grant information sent out here. Uh, you know, every grant is going to have different reporting expectations. Every grant is going to have, uh, you know, some of them want a monthly, quarterly, annual, some just want an annual, some want monthly annual. Um, so your grants team is going to understand all of that and know exactly when all of their information is due. And they will be able to build out all of that calendar information for you. 
Uh, one other helpful thing to note is if you have a block like this really fun block here on all of these back to back things happening on top of your grant reporting you're doing all of your grant writing and you're doing everything in tandem. Uh, this block right here might be a really bad time to expect your grant team to do anything except write grants. Um, so if you have an event in July, for example, uh, you may not be in a position where expecting your grant team to come and be awake and happy and, you know, at your event is, is something uh, that that might be really tough for them. Um, I'm a, a previous grants person and I can tell you that it's really tough uh, to have all of these things do. You're writing new grants, you're managing everything, and then there's an event in the middle of it and you're supposed to drop all of your grant stuff, get all prettied up and go to an event and be on. Um, so this kind of calendar and an understanding of what's going on department to department um, can be a really great way to figure out what expectations you should have for your staff and when. Um, so I'm going to finish out our grants calendar here just so that we have all of that in there and you can see what's going on with our grants team. So there is all of our grant calendar going out through the end of December. Uh, grants are also uh, cyclical. So if your grant starts in August, you're going to have to start that calendar in August for everything due for that grant versus one that comes in in November or one that's January to December. Um, there are also multi-year grants. So uh, make sure that you're titling your grants. Make sure that you know exactly which ones you're talking about. Um, because some years, if you're closing out a, a multi-year grant and you're applying for a new multi-year grant and you have your monthly grants in or your annual grants in, uh, your one-off grants, all of those things are going to build into this calendar uh, and can make it a really busy year for your grants team. So again, our grants team has everything there. Uh, we don't expect them to come to every single board meeting, um, but we need them to be at the first one of our year. Uh, and then, you know, if we decided, okay, we need them to create uh, you know, a grant summary for the rest of our meetings, then you would need to come here and say, you know, grant three annual report is due and also a board meeting summary. So this is how you can start building in other tasks for your, your grants team so that they understand when things are due, uh, when they're needed, and then you guys can talk through with them what is needed, what are the summaries of the grants they need, uh, you know, what's expected of that report, and they can have it ready at every board meeting. So that's kind of how we build out these tasks. Uh, our governance tasks, again, they're going to be uh, a little bit different per organization, um, but we can start to build some of these things out. Um, so let's say that during this board meeting here, this, this week, the beginning of February, this is also when we do our annual audit. So we know that we have everything in the database um, from the previous year. We got all of our year-end tax information out, so everything should be good. And so now we need to do an audit of our database to make sure our numbers match, we understand what's been used and what hasn't, we know what's in there, um, and we can adjust out what we need to do moving forward for this year based on the audit results. So the annual database audit, and then down here we'll say review audit results, and then discuss audit findings. So that's when you're going to let your board know what's happened, what you're doing, all of that. Uh, some other things that are important in this time, um, let's say that we have a board solicitation period. So uh, that's going to start here uh, in February, and we're going to have that run for a couple of weeks. Um, so we will have that board solicitation, uh, and we'll say that it's a month long. So the board solicitation ends right after this board meeting. So that's that final reminder to our board. You guys need to get your solicitations in. You have, you know, board expectations. Uh, here's that. Well, then when we know this board period, we also know over here in our development tasks that we're not going to be sending audits, right? This is kind of a board blackout time for our uh, development team. 
So during this time, our development team uh, might be doing some recouping from end of the year uh, and also planning out appeals, right? So um, we're going to have an appeal that we're going to write. Um, they need to do some uh, board meeting prep, and then we're going to send out our, uh, our appeals after this board solicitation period to anyone who didn't give during that time, plus whatever our other standard list is that we're sending out. So we're going to say here that we have this writing the email appeal, our board meeting prep here. Uh, so this should back up by a week. And then this email appeal I'm going to send this the week after our board solicitation ends. Uh, during this time right here, this might be a really great time to do some professional education, right? Um, so let's say that there is a, a, a workshop um, that our team can attend on writing appeals. Um, so we are going to send them to an appeals writing workshop. <clears throat> so that they are prepped, have some good ideas, uh, and can kind of workshop that year and what our appeals are going to look at, like during this time. Uh, so that's that big gap. During this time, they're also going to be doing all of those other things. They're going to be writing acknowledgement letters, which really should be happening weekly. Uh, they're going to be doing some basic database maintenance. Of course, they're going to be calling donors to say thank you and, you know, major grant uh, or not major grants, I'm sorry, major gifts officers are going to be putting together their schedule. So all of those things are still going to be happening. Uh, if you want to add all of this in here, you can. Uh, that's kind of though that day-to-day -day work that needs to happen. And then these are what happens on top of it. Um, so putting these big things together can be helpful. Uh, let's say also, again, we've got this blackout time. We've just sent out the newsletters. So for the people on your communications team, um, we are going to send them this week uh, to a newsletter writing workshop. So CPE on newsletters. And again, it you know, you've just done your year-end wrap-up. This is going to make everything work really well and easily uh, so that this year moving forward, they have some new ideas they're ready to go, they've written out their calendars, they understand everything. Uh, and then for our organization, our communication team also works with volunteers. Um, so we're gonna have a volunteer event uh, and that's going to happen right about here. Uh, our board solicitation is ending, volunteer events happening, uh, and email appeals going out. Uh, so it's kind of a busy time for the organization, uh, but this gives our board their first opportunity to come one of, to one of their uh, volunteer events since that's required of them. Uh, so that's something that our communications team is going to do. They're going to make sure that they inform the board that they need to come to this event. Uh, and then they'll be able to discuss that at the next board meeting that comes out. Um, so they'll be able to say who attended from the board, um, be able to start tracking that, <clears throat> wrap up the volunteer event, talk about the board solicitation, uh, and have some pre preliminary results on the email appeal that's been sent out this spring. So as you're building this calendar out, uh, I know a lot of you are probably saying this looks like a calendar, not a plan. It's both. Um, you don't have to necessarily write in what the topic is going to be of your email appeal. You can. Um, you're not going to write out the, the text of that, though, right? That's something that whoever is on the appeals team is going to go over together, give a synopsis to whoever needs it, and then write it and send it out. Um, so maybe what you write is a little more cyclical. If you're a uh, animal shelter, for example, spring is puppy and kitten season. So talking about that and why you're expecting, you know, uh, the population of your shelter to grow is something that you might do every single spring. And that would make sense. Um, if you're a school, however, things are probably going to look a little bit different, um, especially with COVID going on. You're back to school, uh, you know, later in the year in the second half is probably going to look a little bit different than it did five years ago, <clears throat> than it did three years ago, even, or two years ago. Um, so, again, figure out what you need to do with that. Have the appropriate teams take action, but everybody needs to know that this is a writing time for the staff. <clears throat> this is when they're going through those drafts, when review is happening, all of that. And then make sure that everyone plans accordingly. Don't ask them to do extra things during this time. Uh, again, with your grants, 
your grants team is going to know who's writing what, who's submitting what, what's happening. That doesn't actually need to go into this. That team should know what's happening and that should be in your policies and procedures manual. Uh, <clears throat> so if you have a question on who's handling grant one and three monthly reports, because there is a grant opportunity that you heard of and you want to make sure that you are sending that email to you know whoever has the bandwidth to take care of it um you can ask that question but at least you know which grants are being handled right now and sending it to the manager of grant one and or three may not be in your best interest this week they're probably not going to get it until the next week at the earliest um <clears throat> and if you look at here we have grant one and three and then grant two and three being worked on here. So I would say whoever is dealing with grant three, leave them out of your new grant opportunity altogether. Uh, this week, you know, grant, grant two writer or manager might be the best person. Uh, and if you only have one grant person, uh, it might be best to talk to them about it during this time right here, or if you find out about it right smack dab in the middle of all of this, uh, put it on their calendar, maybe uh, the week of August 15th to talk to them about it for next year. Uh, chances are they're not going to throw in another grant writing situation into the middle of all of this where they have to research it, figure it out, build out all of that grant information. Um, so again, this can really help you to figure out when to approach, who to approach, who's going to be the busiest, and what's happening. Uh, so as we move on here past our first quarter, uh, I'm going to drop in the rest of our board meetings for the year here because, again, that's known. We don't need to do anything else with it. Yeah, we're skipping this for right now. We already have all of this done. So I'm just going to come in to the second week of each month, and I'm going to drop in my board meeting. So we have a board meeting there, there, right there. August is in, September, October, November, and then December. So we've dropped in our board meetings here. Uh, so let's go through some other governance tasks. We're kind of going through the calendar anyway. And again, um, your governance tasks are probably going to be the one uh, area that has uh, the most that is really consistent year over year um, <clears throat> because you know you set your board meetings those meetings are set and then they go um, you know you know when your board elections are are going to happen you know when uh, you are going to have to start doing budget work all of that stuff is already a known factor since we got all of those dates before we sat down to build out our development plan um, so starting in July, uh, there is an event happening and we're expecting our board to go to it. Um, so if we back up here to the week of July 27th, uh, we'll say that there is this event. And again, since we know there is an event happening, uh, we're going to expect the board to be in attendance uh, and we can build it out here too because we know that there's going to be uh, event attendance required for everybody so we can say there is a event uh, and it's required attendance event and event attendance and then again, we can sit here and say, are we really going to require them to be in attendance in this event uh, in the middle of all of this? That's up to you. I would say no, leave our poor grant person alone and bring them some pie after the event or cake or whatever you've served. Um, so we also know because there's been an event, there's going to be some post event work. We'll come back to that, though, since we're mostly focusing on the board tasks over here. Um, so we know that the board and the executive staff are also going to have that post-event work. And then at this board meeting, we're going to need to be able to review everything that happened there. Uh, let's say then that starting in August is when we have our uh, budget prep uh, going on. So we'll say that we have budget prep. <clears throat> we're finalizing that prep work it was talked about at this board meeting uh, and at this board meeting we need to do our budget approval again if yours takes longer 
put in there when your teams are going to need to be doing it. If you have different teams that are going to be doing their budget prep and it's on different weeks, make sure that you're listing that out as well. Um, so for this one, we're going to say this is the uh, board meeting and at this board meeting, we're doing budget approval. And that is important to note um, because if we're doing uh, budget prep and then budget review and then budget prep finalize and then the budget approval, you're going to need to know that this is going to be a topic over multiple board meetings, which could impact the information that needs to come out from your different teams. So keep them aware of what this schedule is, what this looks like, and what you need from them. It may be a little bit more in depth than what their normal uh, board meeting prep looks like. And so you wanna make sure that they have uh, that list of what's gonna be needed for these more important, more intense meetings um, than just your run of the mill monthly meeting. Uh, so definitely make sure all of that is taken care of. Uh, we also then have an annual meeting. So it's separate from just a regular board meeting. Um, and we are going to have this meeting in October. So our annual meeting happens after our October board meeting. This is when we're going to be doing voting. Um, this is when we know who our new board members are for the rest of the year. Uh, and then our director of development again meets with our board president and talks about the uh, dev committee assignments. Uh, so we're going to put this here in October. So we know that meeting's happening and we know what's going on there. Um, at our final board meeting of the year, uh, we have our, uh, our board meeting with, you know, all assignments have come out. They have all of the materials. We've met. Everything's happened. Um, so now we need them to sign our uh, policy and procedures. So at this board meeting, we're going to do policies and procedures signing. Uh, and we also at our organization uh, have our board members uh, use our CRM because they are doing uh, some fundraising for us. So we need to have their CRM training starting. And so we have uh, that scheduled for an evening the week of the 19th. Um, so they are going to get their CRM training. Um, we're going to have a mini board meeting about that. That's all happening right there in December uh, so that they know what's happening. They understand what's going on. Um, you know, the whole board is expected to be there. So it's technically, again, another board meeting. Um, some people might not consider it a board meeting, but it's, it's mandatory to be on the board. Uh, and then you would see that up here uh, at this board meeting, the first one of the year, we do our second CRM training. So uh, training two. So I didn't add that one to the first one since it's just coming in. This would wrap around. So technically the CRM training two would be the second week of January, 2023. So I'm going to say CRM training two slash board meeting. So the first board meeting in January, they're doing their second half of the CRM training. They're getting everything taken care of. They have the policies and procedures. They know who to go to. They know what is expected of them for getting into the database, for entering things in. Um, and you know, there's no surprises at this point for them. They can start doing their board work. So that takes care of our government's taxes for the year. Um, when we come back in here for some communication tasks, um, we're going to uh, get this huge block of other things that we're doing. So again, we've got these volunteer events going on. Um, we have newsletters that need to be written. Uh, you know, we have this event going on here. So when we back things out from events, we need to know, okay, you know, who is doing everything, right? We need to know who's doing the post-event work. We need to know uh, what, uh, you know, invitations are being sent out. We need to know how many weeks out we need to do that. Uh, we need to have someone pick up those paper invites that we had printed. Uh, we need the invitations to uh, get written. So as we start to build that back, you can see how this calendar starts to, uh, to, to fill out. 
out. Uh, we are also going to have a, a newsletter block and we're going to uh, have a volunteer event in the middle of all of this. So we're doing a volunteer event up here. Uh, we are going to do uh, a newsletter right and then we're also going to send out our newsletter right before the event, just a little bit before as a reminder. Um, so we know from the printer when we're getting everything, dates are set, everything has lined up. We can write our event, we can get that newsletter sent, we can have our event, we can start the post-event work. Um, so you can see how this calendar on top of kind of that normal workflow starts to build out. Um, so after that event, uh, we have a couple of other volunteer events that happen uh, that our board can attend. Uh, we can make sure that everyone's getting their time in and that, you know, they're going to be ready and able to meet all of the qualifications of being on the board. When we come over here to volunteer tasks, uh, again, we know that some different things are happening here. We've got this, you know, email appeal, board meeting prep, we're sending this email appeal. Well, we have this big event coming up, right? So our team's going to need to start working on all of that. Um, so here in April, we're going to have you know, some sponsorship starting to happen. Uh, again, depending on how big the event is, how new the event is, you might need to start that sooner. So you'll adjust out how far in advance you need to do all of that stuff, um, writing this email appeal, uh, and then we're going to need to send an email appeal, but we don't want to do that the same week that invitations are sent to the event. Um, so we're going to do that corresponding with our volunteer event here. Uh, and then once we've done this event, uh, you know, we're going to need to do that post event work, which is usually a little bit longer for your dev staff. So we'll give them two weeks of that post event work. Uh, we also know that our development staff needs to do uh, board prep for our board meeting every week. So right here we have a board meeting. We've got the CPE going on. Uh, so this week also we need to do board meeting prep. And then coming in here to this week, we already have that board meeting prep on there. Uh, we need board meeting prep done. Uh, depending on which day of the week, if, you know, obviously if your board meeting is on Monday, they should be doing the prep the week before. Um, but if your board meeting is later in the week, doing the board meeting prep that same week makes a lot of sense. Um, so here you can see we move this board meeting prep to the week before the board meeting because they're writing an appeal on top of everything else. So adjust that out to what makes sense. Uh, we've got more board meeting prep here. Uh, this week we've got this post event work, board meeting prep, which obviously is going to encompass all of that post event work. Uh, and then you can go down anywhere else you see board Board meeting, we're going to stick in board meeting prep. Uh, with this annual meeting, there might also be annual uh, meeting prep, depending on what that looks like and what you're doing. Um, you know, they may need to come to the uh, different board meetings with your CRM training. Um, so you might need to go to CRM training one, and then again, your CRM training two to answer questions about the database, maybe your communications team or your development team are the ones leading those meetings. Um, so you can really start to see here what's happening, where the gaps are. Um, this might be a, a really good place to stick another smaller event that isn't just volunteer based um, because you do have this block of time here before your annual meeting. Um, you know, when we look up here, uh, there's another gap here. So we can start to see that there's staff available uh, who can start to help with things outside of their normal work, might be a good place to stick in some uh, ongoing training, might be a good place for a smaller event, um, might just be a good place to do a thankathon or to uh, really do something cultivation based. Um, so that's how you build this out. That's how you figure out when things are happening, how you set things back to when they're going to be due, um, and how you really get an idea of what's going on in your organization. Uh, and from here, you can again start to write out the specifics. You know, we have um, appeals going out. What are the topics of our appeals? Who's writing them? Create that, have that put on their calendar. 
papers. Um, they know the due dates now, they know when they're going to be writing, they can balance the rest of their work with all of this information. Um, make sure that whoever's writing your newsletters, whoever's writing your appeals, and whoever is doing, um, you know, like a a theme for your event this year, all talk together and make sure that all of that information going out supports the other information. Um, you know, you don't want to talk about something like heartbreaking in your appeal, but then really happy in your newsletter. Make sure that the tone, make sure that the topics are all complementary at the time. Uh, so then it looks like you're sending out one message from the organization at any given time. Um, and those are the teams that are really going to start to make those decisions, start to work together, figure out what they're going to say, how they're going to say it, and they're going to do it based on this time frame up here that we have. So um, I think right now might be a good time to pause. Uh, I know there have been a lot of chats and some questions. Um, so Diana, do you want to take over so we can get to some of those? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Di. Uh, it's always wonderful to see all the engagement and all the questions from everyone. We also want to say, try not to have a panic attack, especially all you one or two person or small person shops. We see you. You are not alone. If you can't tell from the chat, you're not alone. Um, so please don't be afraid to reach out for with questions, um, share experiences and recommendations as well. Um, we have one question here. Well, we have more than one. We have a question here. <laughs> How do program staff tasks fit into this? If they're saying it would be a great addition in helping creating a culture of philanthropy throughout the entire team. Absolutely. I uh have a column for programs. Uh, depending on the programs you have, you may need a column for each of your programs. Um, and again, if they're going to need or want special messaging or special grant attention, uh, if they have grant numbers due, that was something huge when I did grants, was that our program staff needed to know, you know, these three grants are supporting program A, B, and C, I'm going to need numbers so I can report. So again, add that column for program A, program B, program C, and then work with your grants team to say, when are grant numbers due? And add that in as a, a task. So grants number due this week, every month, quarterly grant numbers due, annual grant numbers due. Um, build that out for them. And then, uh, you know, if you are, if, if that team's doing something exciting uh, or fun or interesting, if that program has something exciting to talk about, again, make sure you're talking with uh, your development staff, with your communication staff, if they're separate from your development staff, um, and help work that in to all of that messaging. Uh, impact is is huge with messaging. It should be huge with messaging. And having, you know, really specific examples of the impact that dollars or grants are making um, in, in a timely fashion instead of just in an annual report uh, can get people really excited. It's fun. It's interesting. It's new. So, you know, you can say our, our program A just did this and it's really great and it's had this impact and our team's really excited. If you want to donate to program A, go to our website. Like that can be something really specific you're doing. It could even be a special appeal. Um, the opposite is true as well. If a program is faltering, if you didn't get that grant that you normally get, have that communication, do a special appeal and say like, hey, this, this is really important. We didn't win our grant this year. Uh, this is something worth saving. Help us fundraise for this. And then, you know, Again, you can quickly see on that calendar where those gaps are and when we have time to do that. Um, so build all of that in with your programming as well. Absolutely, the template is a good place to start, um, but you all are the ones who know all the activities that are going on within your organization. So please um, personalize it for what works for your organization. Add those in. Visibility is always gonna be a good thing. It helps get that alignment across the organization. Um, we have a reaction here for CRM training for the board. Um, <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so depending on how your board functions with your organization, uh, 
I am a firm believer that no one should be touching your database without having training on it, um, whether it's a new staff member, whether it's a board member who's going to be in there, whatever it is. Um, so again, make sure you have your policies and procedures for your database all worked out so people know what to enter, what's required, um, how you enter certain things and where you're putting it. Um, and then allow them access to it in whatever capacity they need. Um, so for example, if they're going to be doing your first time donor thank you calls, um, giving them some access to it so they can go in, make those calls and create that interaction makes a lot of sense. Um, if they are going to be doing uh, like major gifts fundraising for you, uh, it might be really important for them to have the mobile app so that they know exactly who they're visiting and what they're doing, they can star those people and they can go in and they can create those interactions and see what happened. Um, some organizations let their board do like gift entry. Um, so if they get a pledge out of somebody, their board will go in and do that. Other organizations say absolutely not. Um, so again, depending on what your comfort level is with your board, uh, what capacity they are aiding in with fundraising and development tasks, um, you know, it it might be something that they need. And if you are going to let anybody touch your database, make sure they're trained. Absolutely. Um, a quick question here. What is a database audit that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, so uh, a database audit is when you go into the database uh, and you look through to make sure that you have information uh, being entered the way you're expecting it to, uh, you know what's in your database and you know that everything in there is correct. Um, so a simple database audit can be something like looking at the last three years worth of uh, transactions in the database and making sure everything lines up with campaigns, funds, and appeals, um, making sure that information you're anticipating is being added in in custom fields is correct uh, and actually getting entered in. Uh, and then anything else that's really important to you. So if you're tracking event attendance in any sort of way, um, you wanna go in and make sure that everyone who attended your event has been marked as having attended your event. So it can be that simple. Um, it can also be a really big deep dive in uh, auditing the types of reports you have, the number of reports you have, what's being used and what's not, uh, making sure your interactions uh, are going in. Uh, and that people are tagging it with something real and not just everything is other. Um, so uh, the, more, the more simple ones are things that I recommend organizations do every year. They can do it themselves. Um, Bloomerang offers a really big deep dive uh, audit. Uh, some organizations have the capacity and build it in to take a week or two for their development staff to go in and actually audit it themselves. Um, it's just a way to make sure that um, you know what's in your database, you know how it's in your database, and you make sure that it's going in there clean. Um, oftentimes, the results of an audit can be a really great, uh, you know, training opportunity internally to make sure that staff are doing things the way that your policies and procedures manual outlines. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, so from here, I. Uh, this is just a note, we're not gonna jump into the database, but you can then take this information that you've built out in your development plan and you can incorporate it into your CRM software. Um, so in Bloomerang, you can create your campaigns, funds and appeals out for the year and just mark them as deactivated um, so that you're not you know, getting gifts in early for something that you weren't anticipating to get it in early. A, a sponsor is a good example, right? You'll have sponsors who give every year to your golf outing. They're just gonna write the check. So when that check comes in, you're not scrambling to create your golf sponsor's appeal. You can just pull it up, activate it, put your, your gifts in there. Um, if you need to build any new reports or update your saved reports, you can do that now so that when you need that information, you're not also trying to build out a report. Um, and then you can just worry about the reports that you didn't think about or you didn't know you were gonna need and build those out in the moment. Um, if you are, uh, you know, creating these reports that get sent out to uh, board members or staff members before the uh, board meeting, you can get those in the database built out uh, and you can get those scheduled to send so that you don't have to recreate the wheel every single month for those meetings and they just land in inboxes. Um, and then you can go in and you can create um, all of the notes and then uh, if you're using pledges for your grant tracking, you can go in and set that up as well. 
Um, some things with COVID-19. Um, it, I know it's stressful to continue talking about this with as deep into it as we are, um, but different areas are being impacted in different ways. Um, I personally work with a couple of organizations that have already had to cancel their Q1 event and do something virtually. Um, so basically with, um, with COVID-19, um, there, there have been some considerations for sure. So how we're reaching out to people has changed. Um, the impact of reaching out to people has changed. Uh, and then something that I've seen a lot recently, people who sent emails specifically for COVID-19 and then never did a follow-up on how things are going or how it's continuing to impact, um, we're seeing some drop-off there with some people who had given during COVID um, who potentially haven't given again. So making sure that your messaging is being consistent and you're following up can be really important. Um, you know, the personal touch uh, increases with revenue here, you can see. Um, phone calls is, is doing a lot. Um, a lot of people have switched over to text messages, um, which is important. And you can see that there's been a drop in in-person interactions. Um, so I would say just have a plan B for everything that's going on to your calendar. Um, if you have a, a golf tournament coming up this summer, um, maybe start to consider a backup plan if for whatever reason that's not going to happen. Um, same with galas. So for your big events, um, Think through how that would work, how you can change it if you need to more last minute. Uh, and also think about, okay, if we can't do this at all, what else can we do? It might be a series of smaller events. Um, for some organizations, it might be um, maybe a lecture series would be more helpful. Um, maybe doing some like live uh, events with showing off the puppies at the shelter, right? Like there, there are ways you can do this uh, in, in some uh, organizations that would be easier than others. Um, but think through that now and have that backup plan just in case. Um, because again, this is still something that we're, we're facing. Um, and even though it would be a lot easier to pretend like there's no way it's still going to be going on this summer, like it might be. So I feel like we've all been saying for two years now, like there's no way it can keep going. Um, <clears throat> so again, I know it gets to be a lot to continue to talk about, um, but the organizations that have backup plans and have backup methods for communication and who have really thought this through and, you know, really planned for it in events are the ones that are still really successful and who have stayed really successful during all of this. Um, the other group that stayed really successful are the ones whose efforts haven't been impacted. If you don't do big events by default, your big events haven't been impacted by it. Um, so just make sure that, uh, you know, you're talking to your donors, they're aware of the realities um, and, and make sure that they know how they can help because people truly want to help. Um, so, so make sure those impact statements are an honest reflection of what's going on right now at the organization. And then we have resources here. So um, you can go in uh, to the Bloomerang website. We have all of these amazing uh, resources for you. Uh, and then we also have some additional academy classes uh, that are recorded on the website uh, and that we do live uh, pretty regularly. So you can hopefully hop on and catch those live. Whew. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that was again, a lot of great information um, as usual. We have a couple of um, requests for some of the links here for um, um, for the database management uh, policies and procedures template. So we'll link all of those resources in the slides. So everyone will have a copy of that. I'm just trying to look through the questions as well. Um, it looks, well, that's all the time we have for today as well. If you have additional questions, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, as Di mentioned, chat and phone chat and email support are free. Um, so if you have adi ad any additional questions, if you have questions on um, any of the things that we showed you today, our support team can help with that. So thank you again for spending an hour of your day with us today. Um, any last minute thoughts for our friends today, Di? Yeah, um, since you had mentioned some of our smaller organizations uh, earlier, I do want to say don't let this be overwhelming. Uh, 
And having a plan now, even if you need to adjust it as it goes, will make it a lot less overwhelming when things get busy. Um, so it really is worth your time to sit down and say, what are we going to do? Um, and if you are kind of at a loss and you don't even know where to start, um, some of our eBooks are going to be really helpful for you on the website. So they can talk about, you know, a little more in depth how to do some of these different things, some ideas for it. Um, and so I would really recommend starting with our free resources. Uh, and then we have a coaching team at Bloomerang here so we can help out with that. Um, we also have uh, consulting here at Bloomerang. So uh, we can help you out in a bunch of different ways here. So there are free resources and some paid resources for you. Absolutely. We are here for you. So um, please take advantage of our free res resources. And if there's additional help you need, please reach out. Again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We hope this has been helpful for you. Um, it gives you a good place to start and it lessens that feeling of being overwhelmed a little bit. And we hope to see you all in another Academy class soon and have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.